All right. All right. So thanks everyone for joining this SMI community call today, is September 30th, 2020. And let's see, I can't see the full participants list, but if you are new to the meeting and would like to introduce yourself, please go ahead and feel free to do so. I'm gonna take silences. This has been the team for a while, right? <laughs> okay, um, let's now get into the agenda. Um, Oh yeah, and, and before I forget, yeah, if you are on the call, uh, please go ahead and add yourself to the attendees list so we can just know that you were here. And thanks Lee for taking notes. I think that's the, the toughest job with these meetings. And let's get into it. Okay, so um, first item on the agenda, this is gonna be from Patrice uh, to speak about aligning traffic split with traffic target. Uh, Patrice, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, may, may I share my screen? Absolutely, yeah, go ahead. I will stop okay. sharing. Okay, screen, share. And move to this. So you can see the uh, issue 190. Yes. Great. Yes. And I can. So the, I would say it's it's two things. W one thing was that I I wanted to see if we can extend the um, the traffic um, uh, the traffic split with uh, a source but before that what i realized and maybe this is what i want to to discuss first is that the traffic target is referring to uh services the traffic split no sorry the traffic target is referring to service account the traffic split is referring to services and the traffic metrics is referring, for instance, uh, of pod. And they all do that with, with a, in, in a different manner. Like if you look at the traffic target, the way you, refers, you refer to, to service is via this, uh, under this destination and sources, you have this little structure where you uh, provide the kind, the name and the namespace. And the specification mentioned that today we support kind as service account, but maybe in the future we can refer to a other object and service account. When you look at traffic split, uh, the only thing you are referring is to um, service, and it goes directly with with uh, this uh, service uh, element uh, that we have here and and here. And with the traffic uh, metrics, when it refers to a, a pod, you see that it's also this uh, structure of kind, name, and namespace, but this time under uh, a resource uh, element. So, and, and here, what I wanted to do is to extend um, traffic split but before extending traffic split i wanted to know if it would be not a good idea to align the way traffic target and traffic split refers to other objects question mark can you still hear me yeah, that was, I think everybody's yes. thinking, yes. Patrice. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so what is your, I, I will ask a question unless somebody else wants to jump in. What is your ideal outcome here, Patrice? Hello, my idea is that I, I kind of, of like this, this kind of, um, of way to refer to another object where you specify the kind, the name, and the namespace. Um, so basically what I would do is to, uh, use it for the traffic split in the same way that it's done uh, for the traffic target. 
and then it the traffic split will look like uh, something like, like this. So forget about the source, which is the one I, I would like to add. Uh, if we look at the traffic split today, there is a, a rule and a destination. Uh, yeah, you see here, uh, this one is without any rule, unfortunately, and destination. And instead of having service and then just the name of the service, we can have within the traffic split the destination with the kind service, the name with the name of the service, and then the namespace. And then we would have a traffic split, which is a line with the, the traffic spec. And okay. also... So are you, are you referring to <coughs> splitting traffic across namespaces? <coughs> Uh, is that the functionality you want to enable, splitting traffic no, no, across namespaces, Patrice? Here is it's it's not about functionality. Yeah. Um, I, I I I before talking about functionality, I just want to talk about alignment of the the structure, alignment of the syntax. Yeah. So like um, so like tar target has source destination rules. And so you're kind of like looking at maybe having the same okay. pattern in split for it to be like more intuitive. Is that correct? Yes, that's, that's also one of my goal. But before that, uh, the very first thing is to have this kind name, kind name, namespace structure. Yeah. Instead of just service. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, got it. Um, Sorry, it doesn't make sense to me. So, would you split traffic between what? Uh, no, no, no. Let, 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 let's not let's not talk about what traffic split is doing and and traffic is. Uh, so let's not talk about functionality at all. Let's just uh, talk about. I have um, I have a resource that refers to another resource. And the, the structure to, to do that is within the traffic split, you see that traffic split uh, can refer to a service just by using this simple structure. While the traffic uh, target can refer to service account, but using that structure. Yeah, because it's a service account. So Yeah, but this one here, I can also uh, use it like this one. I mean, so I can that means, put... So wait a second. If, you, if we allow people to specify namespaces, that means it's across namespaces. And in the traffic split specification, we have specified that splitting works in a context of a namespace, not across namespaces. You cannot talk about, okay, let's change some type without referring to how every single implementation should change it. Because that's a major change. You allow uh, splitting across namespaces. Okay. Then let, let, me, let me rephrase that. Uh, what I would uh, then want is to just to um, uh, change this service website into this structure. And let's forget about uh, namespace if it's not relevant here. And that's kind of nice because then you're like abstracting the like backend kinds. And so we basically say that, you know, backends are Kubernetes services, but in this manner, it would make the spec a little more, more flexible in if like down the line you wanted to um, support more than just uh, Kubernetes services. Exactly. And that's what has been really nicely uh, put for the traffic target, that for the moment, the only kind you can put here is service account, but maybe later we can have uh, access control based on something else than service account. Yeah. And, and same thing here for traffic split, we would have the ability to, and it looks nicer also, to be honest, to me at least. And it's like the feed, some of the feedback that I've gotten is also like people get confused by like service. 
um, just like this notion of services, it could bring any services, can it be something else? So this make this would make it a little more explicit and and like make it consistent, make the pattern consistent across. Well, uh, that's that's what I was looking for. And I don't know if Stefan is, is there, but um, I, I also looked at the, uh, the Canary CRD from, from Flagger to have some, some inspiration from other CRDs. And they, 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 they are also using this kind uh, name uh, structure. Yep. Yeah, but no namespace. <laughs> my, yeah. my problem wasn't with specifying, like being more verbose and instead of saying service name, saying something like kind service and name my my problem was the fact that if we if we allow specifying a namespace then it it changes everything in terms of how you actually implement it because then you allow traffic splitting across namespaces which is okay so for for challenge. the traffic split let me do it as we speak uh, you would be, so here I have a kind of name, a kind of name. And it's the namespace that I provide at the, the top, which is relevant for the, the whole uh, traffic split. So let's have a quick look. So here now, is. Yeah. One second, if we want to go fully verbose, we should also specify the API version because Okay, for for service and service account where they are stable, they are V1. But for example, in Flagger, I had this problem when I built Flagger, uh, deployment wasn't on apps V1, right? And uh, it was important when the deployment was upgraded to V1, Flagger to know, okay, now I have to talk to a different API version. And if we are thinking in the future to allow other things besides a Kubernetes service, then those other things should be versioned. Um, we can have the API version inside the traffic split as a uh, non-required uh, uh, field, as an optional field. And by default, we'll just assume V1 because it's a service. But when it's not a service, then people should also specify the, the version. You, you put it as required. I yeah. am really glad yeah. you are here because I, I wanted to ask you, should we not extend it to API version like, like you did here? And yeah, for me, that would be even better. Yeah, I put it required because yeah, I, migration was, was such a pain and I decided, okay, I want the API version every time so I don't have to deal with uh, with API discovery called the discovery API of Kubernetes to get all the versions, then to get the preferred version. I mean, trim down the API calls Flagger has to do to uh, know what, what kind of version it has to deal with. Um, okay. Hey, we got, um, Mike, I see your hand raised. You, you want to chime in on, on this? Sorry, I think you've been waiting. Sorry, I didn't see you. In the, uh, yes, I I had uh, two comments, but the one was already uh, addressed. I think the other one, besides also an agreement, definitely makes things explicit. The the defaults or defaulting in general confuses, especially newer users, uh, very very much. Um, but one thing, if you wish, a, a meta comment is that I don't know if everyone is familiar with how things work in IETF, like rough consensus based on on actual implementation, and I'm I'm fully aware of that. We, if we look at, at SMI and everything, we are more from the other side. We're more greenfield implementation following. But uh, as we see more implementations, and and good folks from from Azure spearheading the the way with Open Service Mesh, and others potentially to follow, the more I think we should actually be implementation driven and essentially. Um, see what different implementations do and document that and, and you know, standardize and, and document good practices amongst that to, to ensure interoperability. Um, and, and I think you, you also mentioned or, or will raise another uh, related issue, uh, Patrice, and, and I, I have essentially the same comment in the same direction there, right? It's like, um, let's, let's make it more implementation driven. That's the bottom line. 
Can you say that again? Let's. Yeah, I'm not getting it. Let's make it more implementation driven. So you you just. Uh, Stefan just gave a great ex example, right? You you gave this background, the 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 reasoning why you made a certain field required, right? There is a certain um, thing that was not stable at the point in time, and in order to force it, in order to make it clear to what kind of version you are you're talking, you made it explicit. You required that version so that it's explicitly there, and there's there's no issue, right? And which means in when when if we do such a thing if we say it, it has to have this field and these are the expectations it is implementation driven right it is driven by the experience could be positive or negative that a certain implementer made in this case you Stefan, right this is for me a good practice we should be doing that yeah. rather than yeah i like it like this and you know bike shedding preferences for whatever reasons implementation whenever we can point at the implementation point at the implementation experience that is to me uh, the most valuable one and and can i say that my um my input was absolutely not implementation driven but thanks to stefan it has been transformed into implementation driven yeah my my main concern is if we make the selector, like a full selector where you can say API version, kind, namespace, then we we somehow enforce on all the implementers to be able to deal with multi cross namespace uh, split, which is something that's not currently implemented by anyone. <laughs> no, no, the namespace I, is gone, no? Okay, okay. But that, that was my, my initial uh, thought that Hey, we should, we we like like Michael said. Let's let's wait for someone that actually has a solution that's cross multiple namespaces, and they want to implement SMI, and then we can discuss it if we should add it or not. But since there is no one that does that, I don't think we should have it in there. Uh, having the kind and the API version uh, uh, feels feels good to me. And and also that something is not implemented we call it in amazon we call it uh, not dogs not whistling or do dogs not barking um it, it's also a signal right it says maybe it's not needed maybe it's something we should review at regular cadence and and drop because nobody is implementing it this is mm -hmm. also a very strong signal in itself but w when you say when you say implement it because that that will be I, I mean, my my second request that uh, here um, I have added this this source which is not in the the traffic split and um, in terms of implementation of of course there is not an implementation that supports that as the the SMI but if I have an implementation which is supporting the functionality but without the SMI interface. Will that count for you? Uh, source is a, is a different uh, topic. Uh, yeah. I don't think, I mean, no other service mesh does that. You, sh you shouldn't be enforcing sources in a traffic split. If you enforce something, it should be a firewall rule. And that's, in our case, uh, traffic uh, target, right? Okay, but if I come with an implementation example, we can discuss. That's sure. that's the okay. Sure, but, but out of the uh, I like, but but not with uh, I like it. Yeah, and okay. What why I would be against specifying source in a traffic split is because then you'll be overlapping with a traffic target, and it doesn't make sense in my mind. I mean, traffic split and tar traffic target should work together. With traffic split, you say, I want traffic to be routed to these uh, yeah. uh, endpoints. And with traffic target, you say, OK, but this traffic can only come from these sources and have to yeah. have this identity and have to match the color identity and so on, right? It's, uh -huh. like, it's yeah. like Kubernetes uh, with mixed network policies inside the service definition. <laughs> I, I will come state. with a use case. <laughs> All right, I want to be mindful of the time. Yeah, we got a couple of other items, but yeah, this is this has been some good discussion. All right, let's see.
Okay. But but I can to to conclude, I can um, come with uh, a pull request for the uh, API version kind name and namespace if applicable and not with namespace inapplicable, not changing any functionality. Does yeah, that that's a breaking change to the API. So yeah, we should discuss it. Okay, but I, I will make it more concrete so we can follow the we can continue the discussion. That yeah. sounds good. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, if you just want to update your, your issue there, issue stuff, that'll be helpful. Okay, let's go ahead to the next item here. I'll go back and um, share out my screen. And next we have, uh, I guess we're still talking to you, Patrice, you want to talk about um, the back to CRDs? Uh, should they move uh, to the SMI spec repo? Okay, but maybe we can have this one at the uh, at the end because I do not want to. Uh... Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Uh, the next we have uh, Michelle. Uh, do you want to speak about? Um, did we make the focus for next week's call? SMI metrics. You know, yeah, I feel like. Uh, I don't know if that's Michael's uh, issue. Sorry if I accidentally jumped to you. Um, but yeah, uh, could we make the focus of next week's meeting SMI metrics? I just would love to have a focus conversation on that um, if it's okay, because one of our teammates, John, implemented SMI metrics um, in OSM and he has like a bunch of lessons learned to share. And it, I think it'd be nice to like have just a concerted effort, but it's going to take like, you know, the whole time. So would it be good to like have another meeting for that or do we want to take like the next um, like regular SMI meeting to talk about that? It, it's okay if we want to just are do you, a separate are, focus. Are you, are you suggesting like a working group or like what or is it more like a task force? Like a, I mean, I, I'd love to have a dedicated, I'm just trying to understand it's like a one-off thing or is it more like yeah, just a one-off uh, fo uh, focused conversation around metrics, just because like I know like Stefan and I had a conversation about metrics. Um, I know Linkerd had some issues with, um, ran into some issues with us implementing SMI metrics. And then we mm -hmm. had some like hurdles too. So it'd be really great for us to have like a more in-depth conversation about it. I We can do that in two forms. Uh, one option is to have like an hour long or 45 minute long conversation uh, that's like a separate meeting outside of the regular SMI yeah. call, or should we uh, replace um, um, the stand up with it? I, I would, I would uh, like if there's a vote or a straw, straw poll, I, I would definitely go for a dedicated additional one hour because I guess the 30 minutes won't be enough to go in, yeah. in, in depth. And uh, it is really an important one. So I would certainly volunteer to, to carve out an hour for that if, if there are others also okay. willing to. Cool. Anybody else have some feedback? Yeah, I think a dedicated meeting should be fine. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm just going to schedule it for maybe next week, same time as stand up. Yeah. Richard just, just suggested the same that we use essentially next, next week, the, the, the not normal <laughs> slot uh, to, for a full hour. That sounds like a really good idea. Okay, thank you. Awesome. All right, thanks, Michelle. Uh, next, uh, MH9, uh, any plans for extending? Please confirm I, next week. I would slightly, so that's mine. Um, MH9 is short for oh, sure. uh, long <laughs> last name. Okay. Uh, um, I would slightly prefer to push that back to 14th uh, as well because uh, I was expecting a colleague of mine. Uh, it, it is, and I, I might follow up in, in between with the uh, with our pseudo scribe for, for today. So I'll, I'll get back to you, Lee, and uh, report back to okay. the meeting afterwards. All right. And now we're going back to Patrice. You want to now talk about uh, CRDs and should they move it to the SMI stack? Um, yes. So un unfortunately, I was not there. Uh, last time, but I, I watched uh, the recording. It was quite frustrating to watch the recording and not being able to talk at the same time. Um, the, the, this year, the, I was thinking 
um, that that CRD is a good way to convey um, a, a, a spec uh, expressed as CRDs. So I'm 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 still not understanding why those CRDs are not into the uh, SMI spec repo. I think they just like get automatically generated, right, Stefan? Yeah, so we, we should be switching to the controller runtime library. So when we um, change the API, then we change the SDK and part of the SDK release, we automatically generate the CRD validation, YAML, and yeah, with the GitHub action, we can actually copy that, the YAML spec that contains all the API validation to the um, spec repo. Um, okay. Should be fairly, fairly easy. We do that in, in, in the Flux CD org. Uh, we copy all the CRD specs from everywhere. We transform them in a nice uh, markdown uh, format and then we publish them on our doc site which is yet another repo so i already have in place all these uh github actions and uh, oh. what we need to do is uh, move to control runtime from our current uh, client go sdk all right so we need a like would you mind opening an issue on the uh yeah. sdk repo okay cool and then we'll also need an issue on the SMI spec repo. Um, so Patrice, have you already opened that one? Is that? Uh, no, no, but I, I can, I can Thank do. I, so, but then Stefan, if I understand it well, because I was not aware of that, still new in, in all those things, uh, your workflow is that you, you make the code and then the CRDs is generating out of the code. You do not yeah. write the CRDs. Yeah, and we avoid several things. So in the past, we, we, we modified something in the SDK. Let's say we made a few required, but we forgot to do it in the uh, CRD YAML because we, we don't automatically generate it. We made it by hand. We made the release, then someone noticed, then we went back to another release and so on. Having this thing automated means that the SDK, which comes as um, as a follow up to the to the spec release then the sdk will generate the crd and the crd will be, will be okay. as as the spec but it's just that with with my background i was expecting the generation the other way around but uh, i'm learning what do you mean I, I was thinking that you you set up the, the the standard, meaning that you write the CRD, and then from the CRD you generate your uh, your code or at least a skeleton of your code. No, 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 no. Kubernetes doesn't work like that. It's the other way. Okay. <laughs> Everything is Go. All the other things should be code generated. Okay. Thanks. All right. I think that is everything on the agenda. We got just a minute left. Is there anything anyone else wants to chime in on uh, before we end the meeting? Yeah, so uh, there is a pull request I made long time ago around uh, modifying the, the routes and, and traffic target. Um, I invite people to comment on it. Uh, there are some limitations. Maybe we're okay with it and merge it as it is and iterate over, but um, I don't think the, we, we signal the right stuff <laughs> by having that uh, for months in there. Um, I think we should come to a conclusion. Do you uh, have the, oh. or the pull request number? Sorry, yeah, I just, just want to make sure to we had that. that up. Oops. Yeah, it's it's spelled. Uh, yeah, we can we can get that offline. Okay, one eight five.
All right, you have two LGTMs, but um, Patrice has a comment as well, so we can address that. Oh, but um, I think we need two core maintainer LGTMs, right? As Stefan mentioned, my, my comment is something that can come afterwards. Uh, I think it's indeed better that, that uh, uh, you, you merge and, and then we carry on rather than, than leaving the, the things open too long. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. So I All will right. hold my comment for a, a post merge. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's an advanced one um, of what we currently have. Um, of course, it has some limitations in a way that um, you cannot match ports to HTTP routes um, if your service has uh, exposes different type of, of traffic like UDP and TCP, both of them. You cannot create a specific rule for only UDP and so on. But I feel like this is an extreme edge case. Uh, and adding ports instead of just one makes the, the whole spec way easier to adopt because right now in the current state, if you have two ports, you have to create two separate traffic target objects instead of having one with an array of, of ports. So I feel that the change, uh, even if it has some limitations, it's better than what we had before. Um, if we if we merge if we merge this, I will not make an SMI spec release. I would also rename the traffic target, and then do a release like uh, Michelle proposal to rename it. I think it's a, it should it's it's a, it's a good proposal to cool. to rename traffic target. I think Patrice also volunteered to help us with that too, so you might yeah. want to coordinate. All right, also I, I had mentioned, actually I'm gonna continue the traffic access conversation on the issue since we're out of time. Okay. All right, that'll wrap us up. Uh, let's see, next meeting, uh, well, the next community, community meeting, uh, that'll happen on the 14th. I think um, we will have the discussion just next week about uh, the spec for the traffic split, is that correct? W will someone send out a, um, an invite for that? Yes, I'll send out an invite. Yeah, same, same meeting. And we still need a dedicated note taker who is willing to dive in on the 14th. Isn't that Lee? Uh, he has to be out that day. Oh, and then, then I, I do the note taking in someone else. Not, not so far. I don't mind, I can, I can note take for you, Michael. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That also I'll works. Go ahead. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. And we Thanks will a lot. That was next week for that spec discussion and uh, the week after on the 14th uh, for the next community call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.